I went into this video ready to be disappointed, not with the outcome, but really with the amount of research and effort that went into the video to get the outcome. And I could kind of tell at the start that Death Battle had picked a side before they even showed and probably before they even did any uh, any ideas on it, any like research. And it seemed like S Death was going to be the the pick for them. And I I'm pretty disappointed. I'm not surprised, but I am disappointed. There was a lot of shenanigans in this video that just made me really question their whole setup and really the amount of effort that they put into this. Because well, first off, their scaling was really weird. Like they they scaled the uh, the distance of, of the meteor that Urza intercepted to the uh, they scaled the Earth to the meteor, but they did it in like a really weird linear way, which would get completely messed up by like perspective. And then they didn't do uh, they didn't even look to see how big that planet was. They didn't look to see how big the countries are. Like they brought up uh, they brought up Invil's uh, his big ice feet or his cold feet rather, where he just turns the entire area around them um, into like an arctic wasteland and they assume that's the size of Fiore but they didn't even scale Fiore because from the sizes that we got like the distance we have for Magnolia and Harjion in canon is 370 kilometers which makes uh which makes Fiore like 6520 um kilometers wide it's huge it's the size of a continent their small countries are the size of one of our continents but when you're going to scale Urza's meteor feats, when they already didn't really do much of a job with that, they got a speed for it, but they for some reason didn't give the level of energy that a meteor traveling at said speed would you know, yield. But when you, you take in the anime feats, you think you would uh, use that time frame because it's like a five second time frame in the anime. And then that plus the speed in the meteor and you see like the shock wave like covers like a chunk of the planet. It, it makes me just think that they had an agenda and they picked who they wanted to win before they even really looked into it. Because further, like, when it comes to their abilities, they gave Esteth her, one of her two trump cards, she has, like, the big environmental freezing that covered the continent. But it's, one, it takes multiple days to prep. It takes multiple days for her to get ready. She has to have all these ice clones set up and then absorb them all at once. It's, she's, she's literally expending her amount multiple times and then absorbing that extent multiple times over she's got to have these prepared beforehand in order to have this so i don't know why they would count it um i don't really see how it would really you know make sense for them to have that but then they they, they scale like really oddly too like they take into account like uh, oh yeah both of them have feats that would put them faster than dodging lightning but Estes was really where she's at overall, because she didn't really get that much stronger throughout the series. Like, she she developed her trump cards, but that's really it. And they, the, the lightning dodging was from, um, it was from Natsu dodging Lax's lightning way back in the Fighting Festival, which the gap between Fighting Festival arc characters to now is, like, monumental they were still like pretty foot soldier like tier characters back then they weren't even s class and now gray is spriggan tier on top of having uh lost aspects on top of that on top of having demon slang abilities because there's the thing gray has um demon slang uh ice and s death has ice powers that dwell from a demon Gray would not only have a counter ability to hers whenever he's using his Ice Devil Slang powers, but also he would be dealing extra damage. As we've seen like him going against uh, demons before, it deals extra damage to them and it adds a counteractive um, trait to theirs. So, especially when you think of like, if, if they're counting Laxus's lightning at lightning speed, then why are they not bringing like stuff like uh, Sting's Roar, because it's light, so it should be light speed. And it's Dragon Light, and Dragon Elements in uh, Fairy Tale are superior to their natural counterparts. You know, Dragon Fire is hotter than Fire, uh, Dragon Iron is harder than normal Iron, so Dragon Light should be faster than normal Light, and you know, any of those aspects for specific Dragon traits. And obviously Grey's is a, a demon, but 
the you know, it should still count when it comes to like stuff below him like Sting's roar not to dodging it the fact that they're so much more powerful than their fight festival versions but uh the thing is, the second Gray drops his Ice Devil Slang form, it should be over. Because her large, like, as that's large scale, cold feet isn't going to do sh anything to Gray. It's not going to do shit. Um, Gray is going to have ice that is going to be able to damage her because it's, it's literally ice that other ice users can feel. And uh, Gray, Gray literally adapted to Invul's true ice, which voids durability in real time. So I don't really see. What claim that Estes Ice is really going to do anything to him if he can just mid damage from it adapt and then overcome it and then gain its abilities on top of that? So the, the whole notion that like oh well it came down to Gray's going to use like Lost Ice Shell that you have Estes Freeze Time, but her Freeze Time is literally she's applying Cold to Time, so she's literally freezing time. But if you have a resistance to it, then you can keep moving, and you, it, it doesn't affect you. But the thing about it is not only does Gray have the resistance to it, but Gray's his ice adaptability like aspect and his devil like resistance should be major factors that were in that fight, and they were at least able to get that right. But then Gray got like taken out by some random ice weapon that she threw at him. Why? Why would that do anything to him? Not only like would he have he would easily either be able to dodge it, or he would, uh, you know, he would catch it, or he would eat it. But while he's in his ice devil slang form, her ice isn't going to do anything to him. It's going to do nothing. The only time it, it's done anything was specifically in Bull's true ice and his uh, level, because his magic used it didn't use ice. It uses cold as like the very base root of it, the essence of cold. And Gray overcame and adapted to that. So as long as it's an ice person, I don't really see what the issue is. Especially one that is literally a ice devil like based person against an ice devil slayer based person. It was really ridiculous. And like I said, I, I wasn't surprised. You can tell they didn't really do a lot of research. Like they 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 didn't even take into account like some aspects. Like Gray can just freeze over wounds. Like he can freeze blood. So. Uh, any wound that Esteth puts on him is not really going to be that detrimental to him, not even close to what it would be otherwise. Um, Gray's large-scale ice-like feats. The fact that Gray is practically immune to ice, where Esteth is not, and that Gray would get more powerful as he's eating Esteth's attacks. Like, they didn't even take really into account Gray's ability to eat ice techniques, like, as a factor, really, at all. Because that's a major role in slaying magic, is you're eating the um you're, you're eating the elements that that or the attribute rather because some are not elements but you're eating the attribute that not only counter it but you're becoming more powerful in the process so i don't it, it, the fact that they didn't even really make that as a factor and i i really see gray going into this ice devil slang form way sooner into the fight and at that point it, what's that stuff gonna do nothing and if her power is like in this idea that her power is uh it's so like neatly put into each of her ice constructs and Gray's going to be absorbing it. It's going to be like Natsu eating Ethereon. So I don't, again, I'm not surprised that they had Esteth win. It seemed like, I, I would imagine from their studio that you have somebody that's in there that's probably watched the episodes of Akame Got Kill on Hulu and probably hasn't touched Fairy Tale and just read Wikipedia pages. I mean, you could tell from, like, the, the some of their other death battles that they don't do a lot of research. I mean, like, the, another fairy the one, Grey, or, uh, Urza and Zoro. Like, Urza losing to Zoro was ridiculous. Even, like, Natsu versus Ace. Ace doing anything to Natsu was ridiculous. But, um, yeah, other than that, comment below. Tell me your thoughts are about this video, and tell me your thoughts are about uh, this whole outcome. Were you really surprised? I wasn't, but I was still disappointed. But other than that, I really appreciate it if you would comment below. Thumbs up the video, prefer the like button, subscribe button, and check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and thank you all for listening. Bye.